God bless you, Susan Waldrop here. It is November 16, 2016. The Holy Spirit gave me a word this morning as I was beginning to pray and ask him, what do you want to talk about today? And I kept seeing, kept seeing, kept seeing next year and all of the journey that we have gone through together as a body in 2016 is all heading up for the year 2017. So I'm going to share with you what the scripture he had me put together and also very interesting there were nine points of what I felt he wanted to convey today to you and interesting as it is if we look in the number nine if we look at that number the number nine which is the very last thing that he told me to share with you represents divine completeness or conveys the meaning of finality finality the final thing the very final last line interesting you look at the number nine look at the number nine the day of atonement christ died at the ninth hour of the day or 3 p.m to make the way of salvation open to everyone. The Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, is the only one of God's annual feast days of worship that requires believers to fast for one day. Did you know that? The special day consisted, considered by many Jews to be the holiest of the year brings begins at sunset on the ninth day of the seventh Hebrew month Leviticus 23:32. For us, we recognize this as September, which is the ninth month on our calendar. Shall we pray? And let me get into this, try to get it all through to you. There's so much on my notes here. I pray that we get it all said today. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for this moment in time. We are in time. Even though you're not in time, Lord, you see the big picture. You see the timeline that we are in and on at this very moment. I ask you, Father, as myself, and I know that my brothers and sisters ask you to anoint each of us for your service, Father God. Use us in this final hour, and we believe you are in the name of Jesus. Okay, I'm going to back up to the top of my notes here. Here we go. 2017. Why would the Lord have me talk about 2017 now when it's only 1116, 2016? Well, only God knows all these reasons, but I'm just going to begin to share. 2017. Now, I originally put down, the Holy Spirit had me put down, choose now, interesting now, in November of 2016, whom you will serve and marry into. Yes, marry into. I questioned the Lord myself when I wrote that down. I said, wow, that's a big word, marry. And of course, I'm thinking of the marriage supper of the Lamb. You can surely know that, as I know it probably is registered in your, somebody's just getting Holy Ghost goosebumps right now. I can just feel it. So it was exciting to me. Choose now whom you will serve and marry into. But I put above that the year of 2017, the year of divine completeness dash finality. That because that is the meaning of the number nine. And for some reason, the Lord had me put down the number nine was the very last thing that he had me to put down to watch for for this year. Okay, let's just begin. And also my sub note, how you will be affected through this final journey is what the Lord had me put. Don't, don't ask me that. I just write what he says. That's what he said. How you, big word, big caps, Y-O-U, will be affected. How each of us individually and also as a body will be affected in 2017. Okay. The very first scripture he had me put down is John 15, 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last 
And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give it to you, will give you. Thank you, Jesus. So this is at the above it all. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Remember these words. These are so very important on the, t on the moments when we feel low, when we're looking for answers, when we're looking for direction. You've got to know as you submit your life before the Lord and you ask him to lead you, guide you, protect you, open doors, close doors, he will because you've asked him to. He is your father. He's not going to give you a piece of stone if you ask him for bread. You ask him for direction. He's going to give it to you because he loves you. Because it's not just that he is the king, but he is your father. He loves you dearly. Number one, here we go. Moments. This is what the Lord was showing me that we are going to experience in 2017. Moments when joy will overcome you and fall on anyone around you. That was huge to me because that shows me that when we least expect it, it's a suddenly that God is going to put in our lives and it's going to be happening when we least expect it or as we just begin to talk and share about the Lord with a stranger or a family member or whosoever, you're going to see moments of joy will overcome you and fall on anyone around you, around you. At that time, the scripture that hits me, the Lord had me put together, Luke 10, 21. At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit. You see, that's the key right there. Full of joy through the Holy Spirit. We must be with the Holy Spirit. Have him in us, moving through us every day to experience this joy. Joy. Uh, at that time, Jesus, full of joy. Can you imagine Jesus full of joy? We always think of him on the cross and he's suffering and crying and all of that. But Jesus was full of joy through the Holy Spirit. He said... I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to the little children. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Father, for this, this is what you were pleased to do. The Father was pleased to hide all of the things from the wise and learned people that think they know it all. The arrogant ones, the prideful ones, the ones that have 25 degrees on their wall. Nothing wrong with having degrees, but we've got to know that we are as children and even God will give us jewels. He will give us priceless jewels that are hidden in dark places, that the people that are going to look in the obvious places because they know this is the way you do it. You go to school for years, you get a degree, this, that, 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 that. But God is going to give jewels to his children in the midst of all trials, all hell. Just as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he was with them in the fiery furnace. Daniel in the lion's den, he was with him in that fiery furnace. Don't you know? Don't you know? Number two, here we go. The year of unprecedented opportunities on many levels. The Holy Spirit had me write this. The year 2017 is going to be the year of unprecedented opportunities on many levels, opening doors no man can open. Thank you, Jesus. John 20, 26, a week later, his disciples were in the house again, again. They were in the house again. And Thomas was with them. Thomas, the one that always doubted, the great doubter, Thomas. Though the doors were locked, this is the best part. Are the doors locked in your life? Are the doors seeming like there's no way you can get out because you know when you put a lock on something, unless you know the combination, unless you have the key, you cannot get in. You cannot get into that house. I got to find my notes here. I get so excited. Oh my goodness. 
A week later, John 20, 26. A week later, you see, a week later. It didn't happen right when they were looking for it. It didn't happen right at that exact moment. But a week later, his disciples were in the house again. That means they came before and before and before looking for it, looking for it, looking for it. But a week later, his disciples were in the house again. You see, they were still Jesus' disciples, even though all of that had happened. They still were considered as his disciples. And Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. You see, Jesus is going to come right through those locked doors for you. He's going to say to you, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Why? Because he is the Prince of Peace and he's going through those impossible doors. He's going to open those doors. You don't have the key for, you don't know the combination for, but God is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And at that appointed time, you see, everything is timing, timing, timing. God knows when it's time for that door to open up. And God is not only going to open that door up, but he's going to stand right before you and say, peace be with you. Thank you, Jesus. Acts 5, 19. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. God is going to appoint his angels to open the doors for you as well. And they are going to bring you out just as in Sodom and Gomorrah remember the angels brought them out Acts 16 and 26 suddenly I love that word suddenly there was a such there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken God is going to shake those prison gates, those walls, those impossibilities in your life. God Almighty in heaven above is going to shake the found that the foundations of the prison are shaken. Everything that's standing in your way, God says, I am a God. Is there anybody like me no i can do all these impossible things in your life and i will shake the foundations of that prison i will shake and quake and the walls will come down the gate will come down there you won't even need a lock when god knocks that thing down suddenly there was a violent earthquake and the foundations of the prison were shaken at once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Everyone's chains came loose. Thank you, Jesus. Receive that word for you. Receive that word. That is for you. This is what the Lord had me to give you this day, this moment. Receive it. Many people, they've lived in it so many years and it's like, well, it's never going to happen to me. But God says to you this day, receive it unto you this day that I will at the appointed time shake the very foundations with a violent earthquake and all of these prison doors will fly open and your chains will fall off in the name of Jesus. Number three, it wouldn't have just at number three, I got to go to nine. <laughs> the true body of Christ is going to be found working together like never before seen in 2017. We're going to see the true body found working together like never before seen in the name of Jesus. Ephesians 4, 13, 11 through 13. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, standing to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. What a mouthful! What a mouthful! I couldn't even begin to talk about this. These few little verses, there's so much. It would take 30 minutes just to talk about those couple of little verses. So I ask, Father, that you just, just speak to your people 
exactly the fullness of what these three little verses is saying for them individually. That means if God has called you to be an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher, to equip the people for works of service so that the body of Christ will be built up until we all reach unity in the faith. I should have called that unity in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, the knowledge of him. My people perish for lack of knowledge, knowledge, but God is going to give us the knowledge of the Son of God, and we will become mature, attaining to the whole measure, not just part of the measure, but the whole measure of the fullness, fullness. There's that finality, that number nine of Christ. Number four. The Lord had me to write down in 2017, people that never supported you will support you now, or they will dissolve. They will crumble right before you. That is the other thing. Psalm 23, 4 through 6. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod, your staff comfort me. You prepare, here it is, number five, you prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. God is going to give you a table in the front of your enemies is going to prepare it for you. Your enemies are going to prepare a table before you. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your cup is going to overflow, overflowing of the gifts of the fullness of that which God has prepared for you from before you were even formed in your mother's womb. Surely your goodness and love will follow me. Love, goodness, and mercy, love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, forever. <laughs> I love that. Goodness and mercy, number five, thou prepare a table in the, before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love, mercy, will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's number five. Goodness and mercy is going to follow you in 2017. Get ready, get excited, get prepared in your heart. Thank the Lord every day and say, Father, I'm receiving. I'm ready for this goodness and mercy right now to begin to fall on me like never before so that even my enemies will see it. They'll prepare tables before me. They'll make me a banquet. I'll be invited to meetings I've never been invited to before. I'll find myself in situations of suddenlies. I'll find, Father God, that you are shaking even the foundations of the enemies, and they are going to have to look up and recognize you are with me. As even Nimrod said, strangers, number six, in 2017 will be found sharing their struggles, challenges, intimate moments with you. So this is something to whom much is given, much is required, is the very scripture that God shows me in that one. So we need to be ready and we need to be found worthy as good stewards, preparing our hearts and our minds every evening when you go to bed, when you wake up in the middle of the night, as I found myself in the middle of the night, all night, I was thinking about some things in my own life. I was thinking, you know, I'd like to rearrange that. I'd like to structure that a little bit better so I'll have more time to do this and that. Because you have to have a plan. You have to be organized to some degree. Better to have some plan and have something happen positive with the Lord than to say, well, I don't. Some, you know, you talk to people and you say, what are you doing today? They, they say, I'm just hanging in there. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, we're going to let God do this and that. Well, if you have no plan, then nothing will happen. Most likely you'll be walking around in a circle and in confusion because there won't be any plan. 
That's why it's very important to say, Father, I'm going to move in this direction. If I don't hear from you specifically about what you want me to do, then I'm going to use my own brain. I'm going to put a plan into action of what I feel is a godly thing that you would have me do this day. I'm going to move in some direction because if you move in no direction and you just sit by the gate, then it says like those children in the Bible, better we get up and do something. At least we'd be found moving, lest we sit here and die at the gate. Okay, here we go. I'm going to keep going here. Okay, strangers will be found sharing their struggles, challenges, intimate moments with you, number six in 2017. So get ready because strangers are going to be coming and they're going to be sharing their struggles, their challenges, their intimate moments with you because nobody else will listen to them. Their family may have turned them away. We all saw that little boy that was through throughout of his own home, home at six years old. His mother said, no, because you voted for a certain uh, candidate at a mocked up uh, uh, voting situation in his school. I don't know if that really happened. I mean, you know, we saw the video, but what I mean is a lot of people lose their patience. And of course, when the cameras turned off, they called the baby back in. We don't know what really followed through with that video. I pray to God that mother brought that child back into the house and said, I'm your mother. Love must surpass all. Number, let me see, where am I? I am in number seven. In this valley, in 2017, in this valley of 2016, you will find, no, 2017 I should have, in this valley, no, wait a second, in this valley of 2016 that we have gone through this year, you will find that you will have strength, character in 2017 that you never thought you were capable of. And we all know there's many scriptures that can fall in line with that one. And in other words, all of the valleys that we're going through in 2016 and et cetera before, before all of many of you for many years, you've gone through huge valleys. But in 2017, we're going to come out with strength, character that we never thought we were capable of. Number eight, you will hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in 2017 more than in all the other years. I want to see even say further combined. If you were to take all of those years and you would take every year, how much did you did the Holy Spirit say this to you, that to you, all those things, all those years, add them all up. But <clears throat> God's finale, 2017, you will hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in 2017 more than in all the other years together. He will tell you what to say, what to not share, lest giving the enemy fuel for fire, is what the Lord had me to write down. Number nine, here we go. <laughs> the supernatural and natural atmospheres, this is what the Lord had me write, will marry together, marry together, you heard me right, will marry together like never before. And then the Lord had me write, choose now whom you will serve and marry into in 2017. Is that the kicker? I mean, when he had me write that down, I was like, oh, wow, that sure looks like a, that sure looks like something to me is going to happen in 2017. I'm looking for the Lord to come back every single day, every single day. But this is exciting because God gives us these little nuggets and these things just, you know, fall out of our mouth as we ask him to speak through us. You've got to trust that he will. Otherwise, why serve a God that you're always questioning? Is this you? Is that you? Let's have childlike faith and say, Father, I asked you to speak through me and I, I'm going to trust that this is your words. These are your words, Father. Revelation, here we go. 19.9 Then the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, these are the true words of God. Revelation 19, 17. 
And I saw an angel standing in the sun who cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying in midair, come gather together for the great supper of God. Thank you, Jesus. What a powerful verse. These are all such powerful words we find in God's holy book. Thank you, Father. So now I want to just share again the number nine, which he happened to put nine points down to share with you of things that he said to me. Watch, be watchful, be watchful, all of these things, because the number nine symbolizes divine completeness. That is what we're going to see as a body of Christ next year with the body, the true body, not the body that is mocking, ridiculing, uh, stumbling over their own words many times in anger, living with none of the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness. But the true body of Christ is going to be seeing divine completeness conveying the meaning of finality. We're going to see finality in all of the years. Everything that we've done before, God has prepared you for such a time as this. In 2017, you're going to see mighty miracles, the suddenlies, the violent earthquakes. God is keeping you in the palm of his hand for such a time of th as this. Christ died at the ninth hour of the day, or 3 p.m., to make the way of salvation open to everyone. You're going to be leading a lot of people to Christ in 2017 because it's the ninth hour, the ninth hour. I, I could label this 2017, the ninth year, the ninth hour. To make a way of salvation for everyone, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, is the only one of God's annual feast days of worship that requires believers, requires, it's a requirement, believers, are you a believer, to fast for one day, fast for one day. This special day, considered by many Jews to be the holiest day of the year, begins at sunset on the ninth day of the seventh Hebrew month. Leviticus 23, 32. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you, Father God, that you are always with us. You've never left us and that you're bringing this thing to a finality. I see, as you have spoken through my heart, my spirit, that 2017 is a year of finality, a year of completeness, a year of divine completeness. In the name of Jesus, we also recognize that nine symbolizes the fruits of God's Holy Spirit, which are faithfulness, gentleness, goodness, joy, kindness, long-suffering, peace, love, and self-control, temperance, temperance. You are finalizing all of these gifts through us as representatives, ambassadors of you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up Beth, who has asked for prayers for healing She's struggling with shortness of breath. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Severe choking cough that is chronic sinus infection with post-nasal drip in the name of Jesus. I feel your presence leaving my hands. I know that's you, Holy Spirit. I know you're touching her right now as we all agree together for Beth's touch from you, Father, your healing touch. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Needing a healing miracle in entire digestive tract, esophagus and throat. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you heal all of these 
parts of her body, Father, in the name of Jesus. I know you are. I know you are because I feel you go right through my hands. You said to me many years ago, you showed me that these are one of the gifts that you're using me in. And I agree, Father, with all of my brethren and sisters that whosoever needs your touch, it's you that touches them, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you get all the glory. But we should also recognize gifts you give us, Father, because they're your gifts, your gifts. Father, we ask that you move through your gifts, through your people, that they have been wondering, am I gifted in this area? The Lord would say to you, begin to have faith, as even Thomas doubted. Do not doubt any longer, but move in the gifts and receive the gifts. Receive the gift of healing when someone is praying over you and move in the gift of healing when you are feeling led to pray for them. Let God do the work because it's gifts that he has instructed us to be faithful and good stewards of because to whom much is given, much is required. All he asks is that we believe and that we move in the area he has spoken to us and trust in the name of Jesus. Father, for everyone that is given to this ministry now, Lord, I thank you. For the cards and letters I haven't even had a chance to get into today, I will hopefully tomorrow share. I thank you for their faithfulness, their beautiful faithfulness, Lord. I ask that it all return 1,000 fold every financial donation in the name of Jesus. And Lord, that you give to those that are looking to you for necessities they need, that you meet their need today, this moment, in Jesus' name. I love you. I love you. Have a blessed Wednesday in the Lord.
right in front and my heart was trembling I tried to look and I tried to speak but just worshipped you It's your presence Presence So can your presence, presence, don't let me wake, Lord, let me stay.